the president and the Constitution again. In nearly three years in office, President Donald Trump has spent federal dollars not authorized by Congress, separated families and incarcerated children at the Texas-Mexico border in defiance of a federal court order, pulled 1,000 American troops out of Syria, ignoring a commitment to allies and facilitating war against civilians there, and sent 2,000 American troops to Saudi Arabia without a congressional authorization or declaration of war. He has also criminally obstructed a Department of Justice investigation of himself, but escaped prosecution because of the intercession of an attorney general more loyal to him than to the Constitution. The Constitution. At the outset of his presidency, Trump took the presidential oath of office, promising that he would faithfully execute his obligation to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. James Madison, the scrivener of the Constitution, insisted that the word faithfully be in the presidential oath and that the oath itself be in the Constitution to remind presidents to enforce laws and comply with constitutional provisions, whether they agree with them or not, and to immunize the oath from congressional alteration. Can the President of the United States lawfully enforce only the clauses of the Constitution with which he agrees and ignores those with which he disagrees? In a word, no. The doctrine of the separation of powers, which is the backbone of the Constitution, states that Congress writes the laws, the President enforces them, and the courts interpret them. It also offers that the governmental roles of the three branches cannot be intermingled or traded without undermining the protections for personal liberty that the separation of powers was intended to secure. If the president could pick and choose which laws to enforce and which parts of the Constitution to ignore, he effectively would be deciding what the laws mean, that's a judicial function, and which laws have vitality and which do not. That's a congressional function. President Trump has become known for forceful and often tasteless banter. He publicly calls people crude names, uses foul language, and send, sends dog whistles of lawless behavior to m many of his supporters. All of that is a question of free speech, personal taste, and political risk. But threats to ignore parts of the Constitution are not matters of speech, taste, or risk. They reveal character traits that question the president's fitness for office.